Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. Hi and welcome to the River City Games Podcast. I am SCXCR. I am Unreal. I, I am Shadow Snake. Oh, sorry. You fool! Start over! No. I didn't say who was going to go in order, as usual. I'll go last. It's too late. Okay, the moment actually, is gone wait, now. On to gaming you... news. The gaming news. So real. Today for gaming news, this is um slightly old, but didn't get to mention it last time because uh, I kind of missed it. Pretty sure a lot of people are aware that uh, Yoichi Wada let, uh, stepped down from Square Enix. Any particular reason why? J- apparently just extraordinary loss of 13 billion yen, which in American money is $137 million. And, it, and that happened around the end of March. Mainly in part two, weak console game sales. And I think this also came in light of... Uh, Tomb Raider being a quote-unquote failure. In terms of Even though it sold like what? Three million, roughly. And they wanted like, what, six million, I think? Why do they have like this ridiculous uh, expected sales? It's, it just never works out. Because of ridiculously high production costs. Uh, my favorite part of this is that apparently the quote from him is in the third person. It's time to move on. Me is leaving. Bye. <laughs> Wada said, Chairman of the Board Wada cannot allow President Wada to continue after plunging the company into a huge loss. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. SCR is confused. Unreal is dead. Counter-terrorists do not win. Shadow Snake is speechless. Unreal is dead, coming soon from Suda51. How did I die again? Come on. It's like two in a row. Anything else to say on this one? Well, hope Dragon Quest X breeds some sales, otherwise you're... I don't know how they're gonna make up for that. I'm just gonna say Maybe the same thing that people said when EA had that one guy who stepped down, whose name I already forgot. John uh, Ricitello? I don't know. Oh yeah, Ricitello. Uh, people... I've seen people like celebrating this like it's going to bring some kind of huge change to Square Enix, but again, it's just one guy. So, yeah, we're still gonna get uh, the Final Fantasy 13 Lightning game. The fourth. Yeah, that. yeah. We're, I'm, a, I'm so excited for that game. <laughs> and we're totally so gonna sequel- get Versus 13. There's gonna be so many sequels to that game. It's gonna be like a safe combination. Final Fantasy 13, 28, 7. Over two days. Blondie, you brought up Dragon Quest. Um, if if I recall correctly, um. The new game in Japan was not selling well. Hmm. That's surprising no. because Dragon Quest is actually it may it's have, huge over there. Yeah, but it may have been... Uh, I'm not sure what caused it. it. I may be wrong, but I think that game had a subscription-based thing behind it. Oh. Wait, didn't Monster Hunter Try kind of had something similar to that in Japan? Yeah. It's hard to tell whether Dragon Quest or Monster Hunter is bigger than the other. Because in general, they're both fucking explosive over there. Uh, I guess we should just move on to the next one. Yeah, because I got nothing to add on this. (sighs) Welcome back to Capcom land. Oh, Lord. Apparently, Capcom is now reevaluating its video game outsourcing. I've heard about, I've heard a thing about this or two, but go on. They were on the course to um, record notably improved profits from the last fiscal year, but they did reveal that it's been forced to book a special loss following uh, restructuring efforts. For example, um, DMC and uh, Resident Evil 6 have not made expected sales to where they had to lower their expectations for sales. Multiple times. Multiple times. Oh, yeah. And they pretty much blame outsourcing to other developers for this, and they want to bring more of its development in-house, and probably the worst thing, having a larger focus on DLC. 
Yay! Okay, but more costume oh, packs yeah, for Street thing... Fighter games. By the yeah, by the, the way, one, the one thing they got they got flack for, and they're gonna focus on it. Okay, before we go on, did they say that they're gonna that they blame it on outsourcing? Uh, that kind of sounds a little bit kind of funny because they were the ones that decided to do the outsourcing. It wasn't yeah. anybody anybody asking them to. They did it themselves, so they're like blaming themselves, basically. As far as I know, but that's not gonna fix Lost Planet Three. It's already too late. Oh god! Well, I think after Lost Planet Three, they, I think they already knew at that point. And after, of course, after Resident Evil Raccoon City, it's like I think they know better now, or at least mm -hmm. somewhat better now. By the way, yeah, I but the whole idea of what that special loss amounted to: seven point three billion yen in American money, seventy-four million dollars. Still not as big as Square Enix, but still pretty big. Yeah, but, uh, you know, at one point they're reevaluating, you know, and they're not going to outsource as much, which probably would be a good thing considering, you know, the games we mentioned. But at the same time, it's like, are they trying to go to make up for this with DLC? That's not really how you should do it. That's like, uh, that's like trying to do microtransactions and stuff to, like, make up for your own hugely budgeted game. So that's not really how you should do it, I would think. <laughs> Isn't that what, like, EA is guilty of? Hmm. Well, pretty much any big company like that, where they do DLC or any type of microtransaction, is pretty much guilty of that, yeah. Like, it's it's fine to have that option, but you shouldn't rely on it to make to make a profit, you know? <laughs> to make up for your uh, forecasted sales or whatever. This is a bit of, like, an odd news. I mean, I'm glad they're probably going to do less outsourcing, but the DLC thing kind of scares me. Well, just continue to not buy it, and then they'll realize, oh, people are not buying our DLC. I guess we'll just limit it a bit. That'll Maybe. be the day. Unless people, unless unless people are really that impulsive, and just buy anything that they throw at them. And speaking of EA, because that's yeah, always a great way to start off a news article. Yeah, more uh, even more companies that everyone loves. Uh, Electronic Arts has laid off even more people now. Oh. <laughs> A Montreal-based Montreal source citing direct contact with EA Montreal's developers said that about 200-250 people were cut, and that more people are going to be cut gradually, leading to an eventual complete shutdown of EA Montreal. EA has said that the EA Montreal studio is not closing and that the estimates are too high, but... There's another report from a uh, Portuguese language expert who works for EA who said that uh, the Sao Paulo studio from EA is also shuttering. Kind of from the same company that won the second time of worst company of America. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's that's going... That, that, that thing was just a little, a little too far. I mean, it's like, really? When there's, like, companies... When there's American companies that literally screw people over out of money and everything well this is just like oh you bought a video game that you didn't like worst company ever uh, uh quick I, not, question not to, say, not to say that ea hasn't had bad practices but just saying quick question what did ea montreal make you said they weren't closing but what have they made i don't know because i didn't look that up hold on weren't they the ones behind that new army of two game yes they were that, never yeah. mind <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. yeah i was about don't to care. mention that I don't. Well, it's still a Canadian Didn't studio. Didn't they freaking lay I... them off before the game came out? Well, that the. Um... Hmm. Yeah, did they? That was Visceral. Wait, they were late. But Visceral made Dead Space. They what? Oh my god. No, that has to be a different studio. Okay, I can clarify. It was the Montreal office of Visceral. Ah. Uh... But how can you hate the team that made Boogie? For the Wii, PS2, and Nintendo DS. <laughs> Boogie! <laughs> well, Unreal is dead again. And, I'm just gonna pretend that you didn't say that game, please. And since we're on the EA beat, somewhere Oni Rogaku is screaming because EA has backed off of Facebook, and that includes taking The Sims Social with it. <laughs> well, that includes Sim City Social as well, right? Yep. As well as Pet Society and a whole bunch of other Facebook games I do not give two shits about. Yeah, it looks like the Facebook games really worked out, huh? 
<laughs> well, with its uh, friend friend spamming and microtransactions up its ass. And... Yeah. EA said that while the games were popular to begin with, the number of players and the amount of activity in the games now has fallen off. Who would have thought? I can only just imagine what Oni's uh, react how Oni's reacting to this. He's gonna go back to the Price is Right invites. Thanks a lot, EA. I don't think he even cares. It's just like, oh. Oh, he cared. Um, <laughs> but like, he's he's not. He wasn't like totally invested in that game. It was just something he just did while he was bored. That's pretty much how I saw it. He did post about it on Facebook, but I'm not going to go into the specifics, because, you know... Facebook privacy. Yay. Exactly. Whatever. You just have to get your Facebook game fixed somewhere else, I guess. May as well just play some city on the goddamn SNES. Or, or hell, just get one of the SimCity um, good old games or something. Or hell, I still have SimCity 3000 just play that can we talk about quote-unquote real games now yes yeah please well how about we talk about capcom some more <laughs> so we, are we switching between two the two best companies ever at this point pretty much yeah i think let me guess did they cancel another Mega Man game no this has to do with a currently ongoing series namely monster hunter oh I can't believe I'm saying this phrase, but Monster Hunter Online. Oh yeah, I've read about that too. The MMORPG version of Monster Hunter. Which sounds a little redundant considering Monster Hunter you can play online anyway, but... Yeah, but, but it's not massively multiplayer, uh, it's four people. But yeah, this is like, this is pretty much an MMO, so yeah. I, th I think this is more like a like alternate thing from frontier because that was technically mmo even though like in, in some respects it's still like a four player limit but there's some quests where for example the biggest monster in frontier takes about more than four people to do it and they're all separate and shit it, it's kind of hard to explain but it'd make more sense if you looked it up well, in regards to this, Crytek has been teasing that Monster Hunter Online could see a Western release. And the reason Crytek is doing it is because the game is going to be using CryEngine 3. Oh, yeah. And I boy, does it look weird. I, I, I don't know. Something about the CryEngine used with this game looks off. Well, but, would you rather they use the Unreal Engine for Monster Hunter? No, it would still look weird. Well, at it least it's not... Uh, I was gonna say, at least it's not, you know, the Elder Scrolls Online using the the Old Republic's engine. Yeah. At least none at least of these games are using the Thomas the Tank engine. <laughs> <laughs> well, a adding to the, inter uh, the Western release, I think I did read up on about it. I, c I can't find the article, but it mentioned, like, Monster Hunter Line uh, would be, like, show international players and stuff, which... Probably means it's going to be released pretty much everywhere, but we don't have an official word because the only trailer that was released was for, I think, China or Korea. It was one of those two. I've already had experiences with uh, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate running into people from Germany, France, Mexico. So why not brighten the horizons a little bit? Because we can't read words. There's words there. Who needs words when you just hunt monsters? I don't know. Many things can go wrong. There's been a couple of foreigners that we've ran into that uh, kind of fucked us up. Just saying. No offense, though. Damn foreigners are taking their monsters. How dare they ruin our stick of fucking getting a good attack when they're asleep. No, let's just keep wailing on them when he's asleep. Happened about, what? like, what, three fucking times? Whatever. Yeah. It's like, if, if it does come to the West, though, I'm probably not going to be able to play it. Because the requirements or something? CryEngine 3, thanks a fucking lot. Yeah, I don't well, know if I'll be able to do that either. Yeah, none of us really have high-end PCs, so... I don't even know if I could even ever play the first Crisis, so being able to play this would be, oh god. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar how I managed to run Crisis. Yeah, and, it, I mean, and it looks, yeah, well, it looks it looks about 
the same how I would be able to run the game too, so. Oh man. That game unless... is near the end. I don't know, unless they make like some sort of console version, which I doubt they will. I don't think I don't see any of us playing it anytime soon. Yeah. But still it'd be cool if it does come out here, then it's it's another Monster Hunter game. And it's yeah. time for us to update our PCs. Well, uh, that way we should get at least support the game. But I don't know. This is the equality portion of the podcast. Namely, equality of men and women, as all these stories are about the females. First off, I think all of us are at least kind of excited for Last of Us. Yeah, I am. I want to yeah. play it. I wouldn't mind playing that, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Naughty Dog recently did some focus testing for it, and in the focus testing, they found that the company that brought in people uh, for the focus testing didn't have a single female player in it, so they had to specifically request female players for the focus testing. <laughs> I actually read up on that article. And I, I'm glad Naughty Dog did that. Just broaden the horizon. Just don't do fucking over-testosterone male gamers' as focus test. Stop fucking leaving out other genders. Yeah, Neil Druckmann, yes, uh, the one. creative director for Naughty Dog, said, quote, I hope this is a relic of the past that will soon go away. And frankly, I look forward to the point where this no longer becomes news. Yeah, it would be nice if that wasn't regarded as news, but... And number two. The headline of this just says, If you respect your public, eventually it pays back. And it's a picture of the protagonist from Remember Me. Oh, you mean the... What, oh. that black guy from Other M? Oh, oh no, wait, I... you, mean, you mean the Capcom, uh, the new Capcom IP? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> and, uh, I let's... don't know what to make out of that game, honestly. I'd only get it if, as a secret character, Anthony Higgs from Other M becomes, like, main character. Just, like, as an alternate costume. But, uh, It'd make lead... no sense, but <laughs> it'd be funny. The lead character, Nilin from Remember Me, uh, Jean-Maxime Morris from Don't Not Entertainment, who works on the game, was quoted as saying, we didn't think of gender equality being a major theme in the game, but thinking back on the world we designed, it is true that women have key positions in its governance. Last girl-related story. You know how Boy Scouts are looking to introduce a merit badge for video games? No. I... no. Uh, they are? Yes, they are. What? Okay. Well, guess who else is doing the same thing? EA. Wait. Girl Scouts. <laughs> well, at least both of them have it. You know, equality. Yeah, you know. Well, that's all fair, I <laughs> guess. But still, it's like... I, I never been in the Boy Scouts or anything, but isn't Boy Scouts mostly, like, outdoor stuff? Yes, I can vouch for that. I was a Boy Scout. See, that's what I thought. So, is, is but... a merit badge for a Boy Scout, like, using your 3DS or something? When you're outdoor outside? video gaming. The real merit badge comes with the Vita use. It's like, go go outside and find an outlet to recharge your 3DS or Vita, yeah. <laughs> you must get at least halfway through Fire Emblem Awakening. Blog, 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 blog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, how do these merit badges work for for the, the scouts? Don't ask me, it's been years. Well, I'm... I'm well, not I'm, sure I'm... how it works. It says that the idea behind the patch is to urge young girls to pursue an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math, and show them that a career in video game industry is entirely possible. But again, I have no idea how that works in Girl Scouts, or Boy Scouts, for that matter. I guess the merit is just, like, uh, something you just pers maybe you're pursuing, or at least something like that. Again, I don't know how merits really work in Boy Scouts and Girl yeah, Scouts, see, but... The weird thing is, I was never in Boy Scouts because I just said, screw that, I'd rather stay inside and play, this, play SNES most of the time. That's your true uh, merit badge for video games there. That's yeah. right. I was like that since I... Back in the day, I was never the scout type person. And then, I play then I'd play soccer and slide tackle the fat kids, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> just hope they don't fall on you. Well, if you get them from the side, they won't fall on you. 
<laughs> whatever. Found their one weakness. You gotta attack them like a raptor. Clever girl. <laughs> okay, so is that it? Uh, I guess I could mention this even though there's not really much to it yet, but sort of related to Capcom. Oh lord. Uh, does the name Shinji Mikami ring any bells? Yep. Oh, yep. Wait, are you gonna mention uh, that he's working on some sort of new survival horror title? Indeed, he revealed he is this new called title. The Evil Within. Just recently posted a teaser trailer of it, which tells me absolutely nothing about what this game is about. Sounds like a teaser trailer. Yeah, those teasers usually are. Video game title. Okay, there you go. New video game. All I remembered was some like some weird woman with multiple arms or something. I don't know. Covered in blood and crawling out of the floor while some guy is making something with barbed wire in a basement. Uh, sounds like it sounds pleasant already. Mm -hmm. Isn't Bethesda is that publishing it? Yes, it is. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. Yeah, obviously I want to see a little more from it. But, like you said, it's a teaser trailer. It's not supposed to tell you that much. It's like, oh look, here's a video game. This exists. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's all I got for gaming news. Let's go ahead and look ahead to what games are going to be coming out in the next month, month and a half or so. First off, and this will probably be out by the time this podcast goes up, uh, Dead Island Riptide. I never cared. But, well, but there's a special edition. The first... uh, I don't care. Oh, yeah, that special edition? <laughs> Is that the special edition with, like, that, uh, that statue bust or whatever it was? No, they're not doing the torso statue. Oh, I must be thinking of something else. Or that was just it's a right leg! <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting anyone to have much to say about that. Moving on, uh... Oh, Deadly Premonition Director's Cut, coming out end of April. Oh, for the PS3? Mm hmm I never played that, so I might as well get the PS3 version and give it a shot. Yeah, at least give it a shot. Yeah, it's, it's a... I haven't played it, but it definitely looks like a very interesting game, to say the least. And coming out around the same time, holy shit, a game for the Vita. What is it? Soul Sacrifice. What is that game, I... A game made by Mega Man, aka KG Inafune. Oh. What's it about? Do we know? It's about sacrificing souls, but that's just me going on. Uh, basically, in the game, when you fight stuff, you can rip out parts of your body and use them as weapons. Oh god, Never Dead, no! <laughs> I don't think it's not quite like Never Dead, but... Apparently a lot of people are hoping this can be like a killer app for the Vita, and uh, hope It'll just so, because I don't know what else you're going to have. So I think that's all that's coming out? Oh, no, 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 there's more. Like, uh, for example, Metro Last Light. What month? Like, end of this month? May. Oh. kind of wish I could finish playing the first one, because that one is interesting. Yeah, I haven't finished that either. Can I add something to um, game releases? Because I just remember this one. Mm -hmm. um, May 1st, if I'm correct, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon for the arcade, and I believe PSN as well, and PC. Oh. Which is that super 80s game. Yeah, it's an add-on for Far, Far Cry 3, right? It's a separate game. Or, or a standalone type of thing, right? Okay. So. Yeah. I think it's trying uses... to. I honestly think it's trying to out '80s uh, Double Dragon Neon, and I think it's winning right now. Well, hey, I like '80s stuff like that. Is Billy least, Idol in it? it? I don't know, because <laughs> the mere game's existence still confuses me. I'm like, where did hey, this 80, come it's, from? I don't know. Yeah, but but it's awesome '80s exploitation, so. <laughs> It looks pretty cool, let's say at least. Yeah, from previews, people are like, oh my god, this is awesome. I'm confused as shit, but this is awesome. <laughs> that seems to be what's happening with that game. That's at least what I'm bad. What the fuck is this? This is so awesome. Why we'll am find... I shouting? <laughs> it, well, I... It's just something you wouldn't expect from Far Cry, but it's like, oh, cool. 
And moving ahead further into May, well, technically this is already out, but the port's coming out. Resident Evil Revelations. Oh yeah, the console versions, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I won't be able to get it um, until later, because by the time that game comes out, we're going to be at Anime North, except Shadow Snake. Boo-hoo. By the time that comes out, I won't have any money for it. Because uh... I already bought... Oh, wait. I'll save that for recent pickups. Anyway, moving forward. Oh, right, this is coming out. Uh, 3DS, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's, that's the actual... I kind of got confused at first with this game. It, that's just a port of the Wii game, isn't it? More or less? I believe that's what it is. At least when I looked it up. It's yeah. Like, port, okay. I, when I heard about it, I, at first I thought it was just like a standalone stand game, but apparently it is just kind of a port, I, I'm guessing. At least I think. But cool. Donkey Kong Portable on the go. And this is the last one I'm going to mention because I hear the name of this game a lot, but I still have no idea what it's about. Can someone explain to me what Fuse is? I will. Okay. It, it may be hard to recall, but I think it was in 2011 where Insomniac Games revealed a new uh, game called Overstrike. It was a four-player co-op game, and it seemed like it had a lot of personality behind it. And then EA happened! Yeah, everyone's favorite. No, I I'm serious. Like, pretty much EA said to, like, make it a little more serious, and it, it also led to the title change, which is kind of dumb. I don't know how that game will be, but... Yeah. yeah, they pretty much just made it look really generic, and most people are going to overlook it, aren't they? I, I think the game will be ignored, even if it is Insomniac. That's the thing. Man. So you mean to tell me they, these days? So you mean to tell me they got they got rid of the uh, the interesting look of it when we first saw it, and just made it like the same realistic crap that you usually see in shooters nowadays? The other thing they did mention is that they did. Uh, uh, respond to feedback about the realistic look, and they kind of changed that a bit as well. So they're trying so, to strike a balance? Yeah. As far as I know, the characters are the same, though. Like, that hasn't changed. It's just, hmm. the title changed, other things changed, and it's like, what the fuck? I mean, well, at least it's that. It, at first, it looked like The Incredibles a little bit. Huh. At least that's how I felt. Now it's like, oh, okay. Whatever. Oh, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. We'll see, but whatever. I'm people, just gonna are gonna, a... people are probably going to want a new Ratchet and Clank wagon. I'm just going to take a safe bet and just probably, you know, ignore it. <laughs> All right. Well, I believe that, but wait, no, I forgot one. All right. Coming out beginning of June. Remember me? Oh. Dinner. We just mentioned it, so I guess that's when it's coming out. I guess I'll just rent it and see how it is. I'm actually kind of interested in that game. Will you remember me? <laughs> but, uh, okay, for real, that is the end. Let's get into recent pickups, and I still need to find my recent pickups. So, Shadow, why don't you go ahead? <sighs> why does it I usually get the most out of the recent pickups every time I'm in a podcast? Okay, let's just go through these. At least really you're not Oni, but he downloads everything. Okay, uh, thanks to Angel Halo for helping me getting these GameCube titles, uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, and the original Luigi's Mansion. Cool. Okay, and uh, you pretty much, you pretty much all of it know it, both Monster Hunter versions. And I got these two games on the same day because they released on the same day. Uh, Pandora's Tower and. Something personal that I like, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers for 3DS. I think I have more, but that's all I'm going to say for now. So, I'm done. Wow. Hmm. Okay. okay. I'll go ahead and go a second, because I found everything that I got. When my tax return went through, I was going to save most of it, but I still went out and got a few games with it. A couple of games I got from the I've been meaning to buy this but I just haven't done it yet thing. Uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. <laughs> oh, and wow. Shadows of the Damned. Oh, you got 
both of them are Suda 51 games. Yep. Yeah. I've yet to get Chainsaw Lollipop, but I do have Shadows of the Dan. It's definitely of the Suda 51 caliber. And I pl- I've beaten both of those games. <laughs> Another game from that list that I've had on there for a while and just haven't gotten around to it, I finally got Dark Souls. And then I'm going to cap it off with two Wii games. Um, Prepare to die. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, actually, should I be prepared to die in this game? Because I got Zack and Wiki. Oh. I've, I've got that game way back then, and I liked it, so you'll probably like it too. Prepare to be stumped. Well, it's not a Sierra game. It's not that hard. No, that's just, re- that's just retard. Um, <laughs> this is this. <laughs> and the last well, game I got, which actually came out really recently, and I had it on pre-order, Pandora's Tower. Prepare to eat. Knew it. And uh, that's yeah, that's it for me. So unreal. All right, uh, I'm just gonna glance over for a sec. Two GameCube games that I ended up getting from a pawn shop. Um, Wave Race Blue Storm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with all eight tracks and characters. <laughs> oh man, Ricky Winterborn. Why is he in the game? <laughs> Seriously, why is Ricky Winterborn the worst 1080 snowboarder in this game about wave racing? Because Nintendo Sports games? You know, I, I, w- I would laugh so hard if Ricky Winterborn is actually the worst uh, character in Wave Race Blue Storm. That'd be uh, like, he's not the best character, I can tell you yeah, that much. Yeah, he's not the best in that. There's actually someone worse than him? I think so, I can't remember though. Oh god, I really well, he's one of the, he's one of like he's one of the fast but doesn't turn very well type of characters, if I recall. Whatever. Uh the other GameCube game is uh Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And with both of the games I mentioned, I have not played them yet. I haven't even opened them. <laughs> They've just kind of been sitting there, but that tends to happen. Uh another game I ended up getting, uh Haunting Ground for the PS2. Oh. Sweet. Haven't. Ew. Uh, I've had that game for a while. Haven't played it yet, again. (laughs) Only so much time in the day. Yep. Amazingly. Uh, um, For the 360, I got The Darkness. And it's amazing multiplayer, too. Yeah, we we (laughs) never played that multiplayer, and, uh... It's terrible. Yeah, it, it... yeah, there's a reason why the dark darkness is disregarded for its really good single player. For its yeah, good that was player. The single player was good. I I like played it way back when it came out. Yeah, I and, and I haven't purchased it until well around last week or this week, whatever. Uh, and for the N64, I also got Tetrisphere. Oh, I played that. <laughs> Mainly because at the place I was at, where we both got the darkness and uh, Tetrisphere, nothing else interested me. And for the PSP, because screw the Vita, give me a price drop or give it to me for free. I ain't convinced yet. <laughs> no disrespect to Inafune-san. Your game's probably really good, but Vita is still pretty bad. Um, Fantasy Star Portable. <laughs> Well, it's fantasy I've been Star. Meaning, it's still, I've been meaning, they still play all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been thinking about getting that game, but I've always, you know, not get. How do I word this? I thought about getting it, but I just it never came to me to get it. That that's kind of how I was until I eventually did get it. Uh, I mean, if you do get it, we can still play online. Like, yeah. Game, gameplay wise, uh, it, it pretty much. Okay, way back I played the Fantasy Star Universe demo on Xbox. It played like that. And I'm like, I, I kind of like how that played. Even though Universe is pretty much fucking retarded. Yeah, I have sure... the game. I can vouch for that. And I'm pretty sure the single player in Portable is pretty fucking retarded. But at least when I played the demo on PSP, the gameplay I, I, I found was still enjoyable. But if I had people with me, that would help it. Which is kind of why... The Monster Hunter games on PSP, I'd kind of been laying off because, like, who am I gonna play with? You can play with me. 
I have, I have free me night. Three or more people, please. <laughs> Whatever. But. I'll work on it. We... Whatever. Speaking of working on it, I still have to make a PSN ID. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> It'll take you another two years. Maybe when the PS4 comes out, you'll do How that. How long have you had the PS3 for? Since November. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a continuing trend for this. So get used to it. Until That'll the, be that, on gaming news. Until SCR the... <laughs> finally made a PSN account. Yes. <laughs> that, on the glorious day when you finally and do here's it. this account. Invalid picture, audio, corrupted data. <laughs> yep, we're not revealing that. Out of any other game, um, that's pretty much it, except for one more. Uh, I want you to guess what it is. Uh, 3DS game? Nope. We game game? Yep. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I got Pandora's Tower for the Wii DS. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. That's it. I'm done. Right. Well, okay, I guess. I guess, I guess that guess brings us to you, Blondie. Yeah, that just leaves it to me. Uh, uh, for the Genesis, I actually picked up both Rad Racer and, or not Rad Racer, sorry. Uh, I already have Rad Racer. What am I, what am I talking about? I pi I picked up Road Rash one and two on the Genesis recently. Stealing the club in Road Rash one. Yeah, I haven't. I had a feeling you would reference that. Stealing the club in Road Rash two. Yeah. <laughs> I also picked up uh, Rescue, the NPC mission on the NES, which is kind of like a, a Rainbow Six type game on the NES, which is pretty interesting. For the PSP, I actually got this for only $2. It was on sale at MIEB Games. And that is uh, the Darkstalkers Chronicles, the Chaos Tower. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I got that for only $2. Um, I know recently there's been like, I think there's been a, a Darkstalkers game that was really released on Xbox Live Arcade and PSN, which I think is more or less kind of kind of like that too. But you know, but this was only this was only two dollars, so. Mhm. Mm Not bad. Also on the PS3, I picked this up because it was pretty cheap, uh, and I've been meaning to get all the games for this series, uh, Soul Calibur Five. Oh sweet! You, you know what's together. funny? I saw like. Soul Calibur 5 Collector's Edition at a game at my GameStop and it seemed really affordable for a collector's edition. Well yeah, I mean how it much seemed was like it? less than the freaking regular uh sixty dollar price when it you know like what? Oh well, I was gonna say if it was like twenty dollars new because I have seen limited editions and collector's editions for like 20 bucks. Hell, I got Darkness 2 collector's edition for like 20 bucks for, or limited edition, whatever it's called. But going back to stuff I actually picked up more recently, I downloaded a few things too uh, recently. I f downloaded Beyond Good and Evil HD because it was on sale on uh, Xbox Live for gold members. It was like half off, so you know, only 400 points, why not? And I also kind of caved in and got uh, Okami HD on the PSN because I like Okami. Oh yeah, and I also picked up a couple PC games, both physical and downloaded. I found a PC version of The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, and it's actually a Game of the Year edition that you know comes with uh, the expansions, oh. Blood Moon and uh, Tribu Tribunal. Yeah. Now what's odd with this is is that. I found this in a stack of like PC games, which is also among the other stuff I picked up too recently. And apparently this is a a PAL version because it's this is published by Ubisoft and not Bethesda themselves. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And on the back it's in uh I'm not exactly sure, German or something. But but the good thing is that you can that I can still play this in English, so that's fine. Well, as long as you play it in English. Yeah, and you can still install it and play it just fine. Unlike unlike this other one I found, which was and now this is actually pertains to a game that I actually had when I was younger but never really got anywhere, and it's called and it's Mist. This uh, is apparently a uh... Yeah more about Mist here in a second, which is actually a exclusive collection Mist Mist version that I found. It's by Ubisoft, 
And unlike the Morwen one, this one's all in French. Now, the reason I kind of got this, even though it's all in French, is I was hoping that it would, you know, I would able to get it to run. But give it, but it's I still have a few issues, and you know, it's in French. So even if I did get to work, it still wouldn't. I still would have trouble even getting through the game. So whatever, it was just it was just thing odd. I I just found and sort of picked up just because. Of course, that eventually just led me to going, well, I might as well just go on good old games and just download the Myst Masterpiece Collection, or Masterpiece Edition. So that's what I did. And I've actually have played it and actually have gotten farther than I did when I was really young, so... There's that, at least. And last in the, in the PC games that I sort of picked up, this one's a, another bit of an odd one. I, I found a, a boxed, like, Lore Croft Tomb Raider 2. You know, Tomb Raider 2 starring Lord Croft, actually, it's what it's called. But this is a quote-unquote special edition. Now, here's the kicker with this thing. It's actually an OEM version, which means, yeah, it says on the back here, even though I didn't check it at first, this special version contains three complete levels of Tomb Raider 2 action, so it's more of a demo version than, in it, than the full version, even though it's in a box and everything. So you get a special edition demo? Kind of. Which also leads to this last one I sort of just picked up on eBay for cheap. I actually found, I actually got a CD of Jazz Jackrabbit 2. But this is apparently, even though it says version, this is like version 1.00. Like I only found it for a few bucks on eBay and I figured I'd pick it up anyway. But the thing is with this is that it's, it's apparently an OEM version 2, but it still contains all the episodes, but no level editor as far as I can tell. So it's it's an earlier version of Jazz Racket Rabbit 2, as far as I can tell. And, you know, potential, they made a sequel material, of course. I th think that's it, unless... Oh, wait, no, there's there's also a few free things I got, too. Like, because the, because these are shareware now, and I've been... And since I found Elder Scrolls 3, I decided to get uh, the first two Elder Scrolls, which you can actually download off of the Elder Scrolls site for free. And as long as you have DOSBox, you can play those. And Star Trek Online because I decided to finally try it out anyway, and it's free to play, so why not? And I like, and I'm kind of a Star Trek fan, and I think that's finally it. All right. <laughs> so I sorry, guess I everyone's out there. Are you done? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had I had quite a few things I sort of gotten and downloaded in the past like couple months. There's actually one thing, just one other game I missed. It was like. A oh wait, there is one more I missed too. Sorry. God damn it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, well, I also got on the Wii, and you'll never guess what that is. Luigi's Mansion. Yes, I got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on the Wii. Uh, <laughs> it's Pandora's Tower, which means four for four for all of us here. Oh, so all four of us have got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We know better not to miss out on this. <laughs> Maybe I'll just call it Dracula's Tower because you know, if, I, if, if I recall, I think Angel is still looking for Xenoblade. <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> yeah, Xenoblade is... <laughs> Xenoblade's like the hardest one to get, I think. Unless, unless like, Pandora's Tower ends up being really rare as well. Well, I got all three uh, Operation Rainfall games, so I'm good. Yeah. Uh, but the one game I forgot to add was an XBLA title called Battle Block Theater. Oh yeah, that's, that's made by the same guys who did uh, Castle Crashers, right? Yep. It's a platformer. That's it. With humor. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Ah! That slaps me on the knee. Oh. But anyway, since we're through with our recent pickups, we are through with recent pickups, right? Yes. <laughs> I got four more get unchanged. You son of a bitch. I just downloaded a whole bunch more stuff like Oni did, so... <laughs> After that seemingly never-ending list of games, why don't we talk about games that never end? Namely, our discussion topic today is... Is it actually possible to have infinite gameplay? Uh, Animal Crossing? The well, Sims? Animal Crossing... What at could... what cost? But, yeah, the thing with Animal Crossing is it's, it, yeah, it is designed to just kind of keep going, but... And I have played Animal Crossing before on the, D on the DS, but... It's just kind of after a while, it just sort of it just sort of becomes routine. 
you know, doing just the same stuff over and over again in that game. And, and you know, there's still some things you can do here and there and, you know, buy stuff and rearrange and do that stuff. And it is kind of like a bit of a life simulation type of game, but it's still like, after a while, I just kind of got tired of it. So, yeah. That's, that's kind of the thing I'm going for here. Not just a game that doesn't end, not just a game that you can continue playing, but something that not only keeps going, but keeps going and keeps staying interesting. Uh, what about like MMOs? Those are games that sort of never end, really. Uh, most MMOs like aim for that, but most of them don't actually achieve it. Like just, just for an example, I used to play City of Heroes a lot, but there comes a time when you realize that all you're really doing is getting a job here, going to point A, fighting a bunch of shit, going back to point B. And that's basically what uh, almost every mission in City of Heroes boiled down to. Sometimes you would have to rescue some people, but again, you're basically doing the same thing, it's just that you have this NPC following you. Right, it's like even with stuff that's sort of designed to be, you know, keep going, it eventually starts to feel repetitive in, after a while, right? Yeah. So is it, I guess the main question is, is it possible for games to, to keep things fresh indefinitely? Which mm -hmm. uh, I'm not exactly sure if that is possible, because even, even... You gotta also take it, don't you also have to take into consideration other people's tastes, basically? Well, there's, yeah, there's always that, but it's like, but if, if there's something that, you know, you really like enjoying playing and would you keep playing it for like, like pretty much ever? <laughs> like as much as I like stuff like, you know, stuff like Tetris, you know, Tetris could have like an, an infinite mode where you can just keep, keep playing it for as long as you want. But how long would you be willing to play that until you, until you actually get tired of it? is, I guess, the question. Yeah, I'll just throw out it's another like example that. on this. Uh, you know that I play EverQuest. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. like uh, Champions of Norath or EverQuest 2. Original EverQuest. And that's been My around since... Been 1999, I want to say. Mm. But the thing is, it's not just been the same game. They've Actually, I'm going to look up a list of how many expansions they've had on this game. Yeah, that's, that's been one of those animals that's sort of been still ongoing ever since, like, it's been, like, what, almost, uh... Like 15 14 years? years? Yeah, 14, 15 years. Okay, I got the list. Wow. There's Runes of Canark, Scars of Ilias, Shadows of Luckwin, Planes of Power, Legacy of Acacia, Lost Dungeons of Norath, Gates of Discord, Omens of War, Dragons of Norath, Deaths of Dark Hollow, Prophecy of Rose, Serpent Spine, Buried Sea, Secret of Falder, Se Seeds of Destruction, Underfoot, House of Thule, Veil of Alaris, and Reign of Fear. 19 expansions. With, with the last one coming out November of last year. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess... I guess EverQuest is... ever-ending? I don't know how to say it. Never rest. Or never ending. Never quest. Uh -huh. Actually, no, if you never quest, that would be what we'd play in the game then. No, I said never rest. Never That's rest. That's a really uh, old that makes, name that makes for quest. But, and uh, the things they've tried to do with these expansions have varied wildly. Like, some of these they're adding in new areas. Some of them, like uh, Planes of Power, for example, added a whole new transportation system. Uh, Lost Dungeons of Norath like, had these dungeons popping up in areas that you'd already explored so that you could go back to them, fight new stuff, get new loot, and uh, another one of these added, like, uh, what are they called? Illusions, so that you could like have these items that would make you look like this one race, so you could go into a place that like, absolutely hates your race and will kill you on sight otherwise. But... I think they're kind of hitting the limit with what they're able to do, because you can only come up with so much different stuff and still be able to have a somewhat balanced game. Well, it's still interesting that I, that it seems like the closest we can have to like a game that never ends is something that's online like that, where they can sort of just keep adding more and more to it as the years go by. I mean, granted, with with other games that are online, like like multiplayer games, like really popular like online multiplayer games 
you know, you can still have people play online, like uh, like Diablo 2. People still play online in that. So, you know, there there might be there could be people that have playing you know Diablo 2 online for you know for over 13 years now. See, it would seem like, or at least I would imagine. I would think that it would have to be like something that you play online. Not just so that uh, the content can expand, but also so that you can have the unique experience of playing with other people. Yeah, if, if it's one thing that Animal Crossing would kind of benefit from to keep its longevity going, uh, the more recent installments of Animal Crossing have had some online integration added to it, you know, with visiting like other people's towns and such. When, when well, Animal Crossing as a base by itself, is sort of a never-ending game to kind of begin with, or at least a game that technically has no end, really. There really it's just, is no end. It's just, it's, it really is. Out. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those just do whatever you want type of games, kind of. Same same thing with like something like The Sims, The Sims games. Like those games, you can just kind of just have just have people, and, and then you just do whatever you want with them, and you can play indefinitely with them, kind of. Yeah, but when it comes, I think it's best if you want to like make like an infinite game sort of. I think your best route is probably multiplayer because single player that be kind of hard. I'm not saying it's entirely impossible, but it's just plain hard. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, otherwise it would just feel like mundane. Because you know, with with single player games, it's like you kind of expect a goal. Yeah. With most stuff, like even even with Tetris, it's like you clear the stage. It's like okay. And if you want to play it again, you just play it again. <laughs> yeah. The thing with me is, like, if I ever want to, like, more out of a game, but it can't be expanded, but I just go back to it, basically. Uh, now, the, when it comes to infinite games, the one that comes into my mind, the first thing is Animal Crossing. By the way, I do want to clarify, uh, I did get this idea for a discussion topic from, like, this blog that I read. And there's actually okay. one specific instance in it where it says, and now I'm quoting, an infinite game is not suitable for experimentation or prototyping. Molly new. Yeah, everyone's favorite. Another thing too is that if if you want to have like that quote unquote infinite gameplay, you can't really limit like too severely what you can do in the game. Because otherwise it's going to get a hole real fast. Yeah, and what's what's there to stop you from like still having a game with a goal, but you'll still but you can still go back and play over and over again? Like like pretty much any Mario game is like that. What about the Grand Theft Auto games? Yeah, you can just yeah those you can just indefinitely just explore and just dick around and kill people and do whatever you want. Like those it's, wide open you know, sandbox open, games. Yeah, yeah, sandbox games like that. Minecraft. Why didn't we mention Minecraft? That's pretty much indefinite. That, that yeah, game's I should probably get back to that house I started two years ago. <laughs> yeah, it kind of Minecraft sort of fell into the Animal Crossing thing with me, where it's like after a while, it's just like okay. I mean, I know they keep updating it and adding more stuff to it, but still, but that is still kind of an example of like an infinite game, really, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're there, but at the same time, it's like after a while, you may eventually get tired of them anyway and move on to play something else. But that's just how games in general are anyway, really. It's like once you complete everything about it, you want to move on. Yeah, you don't want to just, most people just don't want to play the same game over and over and over. Yeah, and that's the key reason that I think that's like, Infinite gameplay is not something that you're going to find. It's just people want something else eventually. Mm-hmm. Unless you have something that that keeps bringing people back. Uh, I think that's about all there is to it, really. I imagine. Pretty much. I, I haven't really gotten the say in my piece. Well, you can go ahead. So it. You're basically asking about like, uh, can never-ending games work or something? Well, basically, games that are like work. I'm asking, 
Like, can they stay interesting infinitely? That's kind of um, really hard to pinpoint, really, because at some point, you gotta stop. Like, yeah, you can go on forever until you, like, say you die, and that would be amazing commitment. And your EverQuest example was uh, a great one. And this may be uh, a weird example, or not, not as great as an example, but um, I, I'd like to say the Rock Band DLC and how that turned out. Mm-hmm. With how long yeah. that ran. With yeah, that, that, a variety definitely... of music that came out for that. Yeah, that definitely helped with the longevity of the game. But, come to think of it, when did Rock Band 3 come out? Uh, Rock Band 3 came out in 2010. Rock Band 1 was in 2007, I believe. Or 8. It's not, it didn't last as long as, say, EverQuest, like you said, but it was still a pretty long runner. But compared to EverQuest, Rock Band basically released new stuff every single week ever since its inception. So every week you had something to look forward to or just skip if you wanted to. They covered a multitude of um, music genres that would work for the game. And it went on for a really long time. But the reason why I say it can stay interesting, but it will end at some point. So it can't go on forever, which is why there's no such thing as infinite. Because Rock Band recently ended its uh, DLC haul. And, of course, that made me sad. But it was going to happen at some point. So, with, with with this subject, it's at least a double-edged sword for me. Like, it's possible, but it requires a lot of commitment. And basically that. Because if you can't keep it interesting, well, what's the point? Yeah, but even with, like, the DLC ending, like, Rock Band is still one of those music games where you can at least kind of keep going back to. Just, like, even though after a while playing the same songs, it would get tiring. Yeah, even if there's uh, songs that you uh, never got before, you can go back and get them. Unless your name is Metallica, which they removed one of their first few DLCs. Uh, but that's, that's not the point right now. I'm just saying, like... Unless, unless you were one of the very few people that pretty much bought every single DLC to the point where the song limit got reached. You could only hold 2,000 songs. <laughs> and they released more than 2,000 songs. Definitely. But, well, time to get another hard drive. <laughs> well, time to delete these shitty songs. I'll get them again later. In closing, what I'm saying is... um. <laughs> It's possible, but it's really hard to, and not many people are going to do it. But, yeah, it's, it's all about But like, in the end, it's it will stop. Like yeah, th- there is never a thing so, as infinite. Yeah, because as much as you design a game to just sort of keep going, or as much replayability as you try to implement, it's still kind of something where eventually people are just gonna maybe stop and just play something else. <laughs> but you know, but they can still go back to it. And, do whatever if they want. I mean, there's but, nothing wrong with doing that, but yeah. But as, as try to like hook people in and play it indefinitely, it's it's sort of it'd be kind of hard. I mean, I'll I'll just say this right now. Ever since I played Fire Emblem, I I managed to beat the game like two times. Like something about it managed to get me to play it over and over again, and I'm still playing it still to this day. You know, just do like fun stuff. Just do free battles and all that stuff and just develop relationships because somehow that game managed to get me to go back to it all really but I have this feeling that someday I probably won't play Fire Emblem Awakening for so long because you know I'd like to see something else yeah eventually if we're if we're if you're like us and you, and you like to play all sorts of different games and it's like yeah like for example we've all been playing Monster Hunter I think we're all going to eventually stop playing it until the, new, until the next one comes out. Yes. Or until we never get another installment ever. Until the series finally ends in 2050. Like, I like how they're doing... I like what they're doing with Monster Hunter by adding, like, daily 
you know, event quests, which it's actually done a lot better than it was in Try, where we can actually replay those event quests anytime we want. But eventually, I think they're going to run out of ideas of what event quests to, to add. So that's something to keep in mind. Like, there's just, like, when it comes to games, there's, like, a limit to how much you can add. It's not, I'm not talking about, like, memory or all that stuff. It's just how, it depends on how the game is designed and if it allows it. All right. Well, I believe that wraps up our discussion for this particular topic. And let's go on to something that isn't infinite, which is the number of viewer questions we got this week. Let me guess one. Uh, no, actually, we have multiple questions. Oh. And in fact, actually, should I start with Akigo? Um, <laughs> how about we start with the other guy, actually, because... All right, this guy Akigo, has, like... you've, you're taking a backseat to this one. Sorry, <laughs> buddy. This is from... Okay, and I know I am going to butcher this name. Uh, Powell Opoka? Powell Opoka? Powell Opoka? We apologize so if we got your name wrong. I, but... I am not good with Polish names, so. How do we know if it's Polish? Because Facebook says he's from Poland. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm backing off for the rest of this. But he actually asked three questions. Uh, the first one being. What are your opinions of websites selling game keys? Like, for example, Steam games, PSN games, PSN cards, for way cheaper than it's supposed to be. Like, for example, there's a $10 game on Steam and a key, and for one of those websites on e or on eBay, it costs $5. So it's basically... Like, I, I never did this, but you can go on eBay or something and just buy uh, uh, key voucher keys or whatever for games on... I wouldn't trust... Uh voucher keys from ebay i mean i've gotten many stuff from ebay but voucher keys were not one of them because who knows maybe they used it and they didn't tell you and you get locked out of a couple of dollars yeah that's yeah. that's one reason i wouldn't do it is uh just a matter of trust and another reason i wouldn't do it is because i'd want to more directly support uh the developer mm -hmm. yeah I, I think the only time i actually did that was with uh if you buy a new PC game these days, most of the time you have to like, it's mostly just like a voucher key really, they like just, uh, and you install it on Steam or whatever. But I recall like back way back when the uh, Metro 2033 game was being uh, offered for free through the yep. Facebook promotion, they, that's how you got key, a key through that. But it's, yeah, but it's like these days with most PC games, it's pretty much just, just even if you buy it at a retail, you're still gonna install it on Steam, or I guess to a lesser extent, Origin. There's actually uh, one thing that, in terms of uh, selling keys, I think is actually great. One thing. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with the Humble Bundles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, with that, you could basically name whatever price you want. It doesn't just go to the developers or the Humble Bundle, it also goes to a number of charities and you can like distribute that and um the humble bundles usually come with a bunch of indie games and if you pay a certain price you'll get extra stuff and after you deal with that you basically get um keys for the games and if you pay more the other games and hell even some soundtracks if the humble bundle included it stuff like that's great because it you can evenly support everyone involved including the charities Unless you're an asshole and just pay one penny and don't care about the extra game. Like, I don't even know how you're going to split one penny. But anytime I've done a Humble Bundle, I've always uh, paid more than the average. Because Same. you get extra stuff and, well, charity. It's not that expensive anyway. It's been, like, at least under $10 each time. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely cheaper alternatives, like, like you guys said in the question here. Pirating! Well... well that's not even paying anything at all. I'm saying cheaper, not cheap. Yeah, we do not. Urban <laughs> <laughs> City Gears does not, not, not condone piracy, by the way. Um, but with this, it's like, I mean, most of the time you can just wait for like a, maybe a Steam sale or something, and, or the Humble Bundles. I mean, sure, sure, getting the, you know, PSN cards and, and key and key codes and whatever are, are, is cheaper through other means. But most of the time, it's like 
most of the time it's for things that aren't even that expensive to begin with. And a lot of times you can just sort of wait for a sale or a bundle if you if you really want want to be patient for those games anyway. So I don't know, it's it's just it just seems like you don't really have to unless you really want to save money. And uh, and if you're really willing to at least trust the sellers and stuff on eBay for the cards and stuff. Okay. Well, well, moving on to I don't his... think I... Oh, sorry. I don't think I've had... Um, essentially, uh, when it comes to those things, I like to, you know... I don't trust websites like eBay, like a, like everyone else here. I would, I would rather get do, get these types of things on Amazon because, you know, it's I can support the, the companies and, you know, get my part and get my part. But pretty much everything else is what everyone else here said. But move on. All right, well, question number two. Do you ever have a problem finding a game for a specific system in video game stores? In his case, it's GameCube games, because Poland video game stores only have PS2, PS3, 360 with the occasional Xbox game, so he's forced to buy online, which most of the time comes from Germany or the UK. Can I answer this? Go ahead. Every fucking day! Okay. At, yes. at least with um, I, I think a lot of places in um, a lot of game stores around here in America, or hell in Canada too, or just anywhere now, um, kind of hard to find stuff if your name isn't Pawn Shop or anything. If you go to GameStop, well, at least with me, PS2 is gone now. Same here. Which Same here. I thought they would have kept PS2 uh, longer because they got rid of GameCube, they got rid of Xbox earlier. My EB Games still has a few PS2 stuff, but yeah, for the most part, it's it's pretty much being phased out. Which which sucks. Which means like for a couple games, I've had to resort to online as well. But yeah, that's that's the thing though. I think I think with GameStop and EA, I or not EA, sorry, EB Games, they're realizing that that because there's all these different uh, other sources where, you, where people can find cheap cheap used games. They realize that you know most people are not going to go to to GameStop or EB with their with their old GameCube and PS2 games, you know, because most of the time they're probably not even get going to get like what a dollar for for most of those really old games to begin with. So there's not going to be that much trading value to begin with, unless it's unless it's something like you know like a, a Mario game or something on the GameCube or whatever. Even, um, even then, I kind of like miss that GameStop was doing that, but now that it's gone, it's just the oldest thing they have is DS and PSP. Luckily yeah, that me. will be phased out too. Yeah, because, uh, like I said, and then you got, the people can just kind of buy them online and, or or uh, through other stores as well, like secondhand stores. Yeah, pawn shops, well, that's basically what I have to rely on now, aside from looking online. Like Most, most of my old games have been pretty much from pawn shops. Like even awesome. even back even back when my EB games was still having GameCube and Xbox and stuff getting and stuff, it's even a few Game Boy Advance games I've gotten from there before. But uh, yeah, a couple of the games I mentioned from recent pickups, um, like Final Fantasy and Haunted Ground, were pawn shops basically. Haunted Ground less of a pawn shop, but more like a or, or hell. A few years some some years ago, I actually remember getting like F Zero for the Super Nintendo at my EB games. Which was kind of, which is kind of funny that back then they even had a few Super Nintendo games. You know, yeah. actually, now that I what? think about it, there's a store in America known as Fye uh, for your entertainment. It's usually a music, like store. Um, around my town, it's only a music store, and of course they still sell like new games or just like some used PS3, Xbox, Wii games. But in another town in the state I live in, um, in this. This is the same town where Toys R Us was when I was like on looking for toys and shit. Um, at the mall there, they have two FYEs. They've got this, the music-based one and FYE Games. And when I went in there, I was surprised to see that they had retro shit, which like confused me and amazed me as well. So some uh, store chains can possibly still sell retro games, but I don't know if FYE is international. That's the thing. And not every place may have like an FYE game related stuff. It may just be regular. 
and not have that old game stuff. But again, this was in a mall. You may get lucky if you find one. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it depends on like where you live and what stores are available to you. And also, don't forget have. flea markets. Flea markets could also have retro stuff. Black market, buy Earthbound for $2. Okay, well, as far as my concern goes, I actually have a pretty... I do have a couple pawn shops in my area, but yet the one I go to mostly is, you know, everyone here knows. Take a guess. Over game. <laughs> well, close, but switch those words uh, around. It's... Over it's, it's just... Yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> that's okay. the joke. Jinx, get out. <laughs> okay, um, essentially, Game Over, which is a great place, by the way, if you live in Texas, I recommend checking those places out. Um, essentially, they sell all sorts of, you know, stuff from the Atari 2600 to current gen. And they have, like, special events, but that's not the point there. It's like, whenever I want to look for something, like, old or whatever, I just, like, take a glance and say, hey, let's see if Game Over has, has it there. And pretty much most of the time, they actually have something good there. Like, for example, like, on their Facebook page, they posted a picture of, a, of obtaining a lot of, like, great places in one game, which I really want to get, like, right now. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, I sometimes go for getting old games online, but not really. But because of the convenience of the store, I just go to there instead. So, yeah, it makes, you know, finding, like, older games a lot easy. Yeah, and the thing is, too, with a lot of old games, uh, a lot of them are becoming downloadable. So, I mean, there's still there's still a huge catalog of like of, ga of games that are not available for download yet, obviously. But for the most part, it's like for at least for like the re the, old, the older stuff like PlayStation and before you can you can download a lot of them off of like the Virtual Console and PSN and X even Xbox Live Arcade and stuff. And of course, there's new versions of, of old games, you know, revamped in HD and all that stuff. So, you know, eventually it's like. At least it's an alternative, if you, unless you just want to get a physical copy of those games. Yeah. Unless you're like uh, collectors like us. <laughs> yeah. But for, for those games that aren't available for download, it's like, yeah, you gotta it's either, you can either come across them in, in some other place or at a convention, or it's like, or it's like, or if you hunt them down online. But if it's something that's like really sought after and expensive online, it's just, it's just like, ah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, around here, uh, GameStop's pretty much the same as you guys pretty much described. I remember a long time ago that I actually got a copy of Final Fantasy on the NES from a GameStop. <laughs> Back when they... I don't know if every GameStop did this, but there was like a retro section where they just threw a bunch of old shit on and tried to sell it. But uh, they stopped doing that a while ago. And uh, actually, I'm kind of like lucky in terms of where I live because I live in Columbus, Ohio. And for whatever reason, there's like a bunch of retro trade-in, whatever you want to call them stores. Like I can think of at least seven off the top of my head that are within like a 20 minute drive. Uh, there's a small chain around here called Play It Trade It, which they also trade in things like uh, DVDs and music CDs, but they have a huge selection of retro games going as far back as the Atari 2600. Uh, there's one place around here called Super Game Team, which is just strict uh, retro gaming, except for the smaller section of like VHSs and some metal albums. And then there's like this Mont Pa store and this other place, and I really kind of lucked out with where I live. And there's also like a group of retro gamers here uh, called the Columbus, Ohio Retro Gaming Society, which has an annual convention where they have like vendors and people just showing off shit that they have. But uh, as far as like buying online, I have actually done that a couple of times. Like, uh, James Bond Jr., when I did the video on that, that was a cartridge that I bought off of eBay. I find that with eBay, so long as you find someone that has like 97, 98% like positive ratings, you're usually going to be okay. Yeah, that, that, could, that could factor also with, you know, buying the, the codes and stuff online too, or the yeah, cards. Yeah. So, 
But again, oh, as, long as, like, as long as they're reliable. <laughs> again, it's going to depend on like what kind of games they have in stock, because a lot of people love to trade in just like old sports games, and then that like floods oh, yeah. an entire shelf. Yeah, I've, I've had the the few pawn shops in my areas, or at least the one like the, the one main one I go to. There's just like a box of like PS2 sports games. And they're like a dollar each. <laughs> It's just like it's just like a desperation box. It's just like here, here's a bunch of here's something really cheap. Like those PS2 hockey games I gave you. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, hockey, football, all those, all those games. Yeah, the only thing I can really say about that is uh, try and figure out like what all is in your neighborhood and in the surrounding area. Because I just kind of lucked out and found all of this stuff around me. Yeah, I mean, you never know what you what you can find, even at even at stuff that doesn't even really have that me- that much video games to begin with. Like, I've heard people get get games at like, you know, bookstores and stuff, you know, or used bookstores. Yeah. That that reminds me of another one. There's a place, there's a chain around here called Half Price Books, and yeah, it's a bookstore, but they also have a video game section. Yeah, so you never know what you'll find in in these all these places. And even just like actually, regular pawn or thrift stores, like you mentioned earlier, there's yeah, you, a chain of I, thrift I, stores around here called Ohio Thrift, and that's where I found Mega Man X for ninety cents. Yeah, so if if you're lucky and you you can just come across all these games that you may not even expect. You know, you want to know something? But I actually managed to find the first uh, Xenosaga for PS2 at a pawn shop for like two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, that's an interesting movie. <laughs> I still don't think it tops you finding Mega Man Legends 2 in, like, what, the gar- in a garbage? <laughs> you, what? Yeah. yeah. I managed to find a copy of Mega Man Legends 2 working, mind you, in the garbage. Huh? <laughs> what? Yeah. What? You guys don't remember that? So, no. wait, what did. Wait, what did he find in the garbage? Mega Man Legends 2. This game's the... garbage! <laughs> oh, it still works. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong, it wasn't me that threw it away. Like, it was actually at the, the grocery store. It. it was at the uh, grocery uh, store uh, parking lot. I was, like, doing cards or whatever, like, getting all the cards for the, you know, for the customer or whatever. I just cut and I just, like, I usually make glances everywhere of my surroundings, you know, because it's in the sh- parking lot, but yet something got my something kind of got my attention of this garbage can like it had like a bunch of cd cases like it was on the top of the garbage can so I made sure i washed my hands you know for clean sake um there was like this box shell of games they all seemed completely damaged but yet when i saw Mega Man legends 2 i was like i looked around i was like did anybody like recently wait so that was like the only thing i picked up i probably could have picked up the other games but it would probably make be too obvious or whatever, so I just sneakily grabbed Mega Man Legends 2 because that was the one game that I cared about, and put it back in my car and just went went back to work. So yeah, finding games isn't just limited to just game stores. (laughs) (laughs) Or even stores, apparently. You might luck out and one in a million chance find a rare game like that in the garbage. Who knows? (laughs) And it still works! I I just don't believe that. I'm like... Okay, well, on that high note, let's go to the next question. Uh, final question from this guy. Did Akago ask you guys a question this episode of the podcast? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, all right, Akago. It's as, it's as sure as the sun rising. Speaking of which, next question, Akago! I think people are on to him. <laughs> I, be- I bet next podcast he's not going to post one just to spite that guy. <laughs> Which wouldn't be good, because next thing you know, we have no questions that week. <laughs> Your questions. Oh, it's done. Hello, next. Next, yeah. <laughs> It'll be easier on me editing this, so whatever. Anyway, Akigo's question. What are some power-ups or food items from games you wish you had in real life? Mario uh-huh. Mushroom. I want to get big. Yeah, but then you'll have to get, like, new clothes and all that stuff. Eh, uh, it'll just grow with me. And besides... And you'll have to run into a Goomba to go through doorways. Another power-up that I would like and that would benefit me personally, 1-Up Mushroom, because I die every fucking episode. 
We died. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you only died in one of your videos. I died twice already! Okay! Sorry. Actually, no, I died three times. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You could die a lot. I would rather- I would love to have the Metroid power-ups. Or held just the suit? Yeah. yeah if anything, you. I- If anything, I would like to, you know, combat enemies like Dante from Don't Make Cry. Have his, uh... Uh, would would would, I, would items the character use count as power ups like like Dante's sword and his guns? Yeah, like he actually gets new weapons like in D DMC three. Like, and there was like a couple cool ones. Like he gets like this really cool guitar that can like cause like tri like a barrage of electricity and just shock the hell out of his enemies. It's pretty cool. If I could have That's that it. guitar, I probably would want. The, you know the, the rocket pack from rock from rock, the rocket night games but that's just me being a fanboy of those uh but in terms of like food actually what i actually i think would be the most interesting to have in terms of food would be the food that you have the vanillaware games uh, specifically own spear and, Mur and muramasa oh yeah <laughs> like those gate like those games make a make a good emphasis on like the food and stuff, and they they, they the food literally like levels you up in that game, it, and it's like, wow, that actually looks pretty good. There's a thing in Japanese culture about food. <laughs> yeah, so food is definitely something prevalent in. What about all the food in Monster Hunter? Well, the steaks. <laughs> yeah, the well done steaks. They give Bur you a stamina boost. <laughs> just pull a barbecue out of nowhere and just cook a bunch of steaks. <laughs> yes. It's like, yay, my stamina increased. Now I can run farther. Can I also when I when I cook those uh, steaks, can, it, can that music just play? Well, I'll have to hook up some kind of speaker system, but sure. Yeah, and just have like some lady say, "So tasty." As far as like power ups, I hit. I'm gonna go classic like Unreal did with this, but I'm not gonna say the mushroom, I'm going to say the Power Star. I just wanna use that and then go into a rave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as food, I have two that come to mind. One is pulling roast beef out of the wall in Castlevania. And uh, wall the roast. other one is just like any of the food power-ups from the ga the uh, Gauntlet games, like the later ones. Elf is about to die. Just so that any time I like eat some of that, there, I can have this really loud, booming voice that goes, "I like food." <laughs> <laughs> or hell, how about uh, garbage can ch garbage uh, can chicken from like Streets of Rage or something? <laughs> That's just oh, unsanitary. Right. <laughs> Put the chicken back with your copy of Mega Four. Man Legends 2. That's yeah, there's a lot of food in River City Ransom too that you can get. Gotta get, fighting, so I can get hot cocoa. Gotta get hot cocoa so I can go do more fighting. Gotta get fighting so I can do more hot cocoa. Anything else someone wants to suggest on this? Nah. I'm trying I, I'm trying to remember what was something else I would want. Uh this move on. Oh. I believe that does it then. If anyone has a question they want to be answered on the podcast, you can ask us in the comments section of the YouTube upload or on the website. You can also ask us on Facebook, facebook.com slash rivercitygamers. But for now, let's get into video updates. Hold on. Okay, it landed face up. Shadow, you're going first. I got, uh, I got barely anything. I... There's like, I do want to make a video about Metal Gear Rising, that's all I gotta say, and eventually a video about Fire Emblem. But uh, due to college and due to, you know, Monster Ultimate, <laughs> taking up my time, I haven't had any chance to make any progress on those, so yeah, call me lazy. That's as far as I got. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's it. Alright, well, Unreal. Oh boy. Let's see, um, in regards to the last hunt, progress is being made. In fact, during the recording of the podcast, uh, a couple more videos are ready to, um, have voice recordings go for that. They'll probably be, at least one of them will probably be, one or two of them will probably be out 
before this podcast is uploaded. In terms of self projects like reviews, um, I'm currently at a roadblock of Ain't Got Games. Nothing has started yet because I'm more of a del- in a dilemma of should I do this game? So I'm more of like in a confusion state right there. That's why that's not getting anywhere. I'll decide eventually, but you probably won't be seeing any new Ain't Got Games for a little bit. Let's look at the that, that and because uh, school's also getting in the way. Um, if anything, um, I uploaded a Menu Madness on the site. That's still gonna be uh, that's still gonna be less common, but more common than game reviews because, like I've stated, they're e- they're easier to make and well, it makes me like feel like I can at least put out something instead of just sitting around doing nothing and go, what do I do now? I'm bored. <laughs> And that and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is psych- is just sapping my life away. Please help. Help! Please help me too. Help! Please. This game- help. This game is- Just give the game to me then. No! Absolutely not, no. You'll be fine, then you can- I'll give you the hits. copy you can't even play. Here, you can't play it now. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> Oops. Well, what you could do is get the 3DS version eventually. Or might as well just get the Wii U version, but whatever. But you got to buy an entire console for that. Well, I know, that's why I said eventually, someday, hopefully. I'll, I'll just, the next few years. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say, um, uh, early to mid-May is when my college semester is going to end. But... Anime North is the same month, so I wouldn't have much time to work on anything before I attend that this year, along with um, a couple of the others, including Blondie and SCR. But I think we'll explain a little bit more uh, a bit later, because we talked about it last podcast. Outside of that, um, me and Zero Master have talked over our quote-unquote anniversary video. I, I'm just going to assume that whatever Zero's doing, that's the real anniversary. Mine is more like a side thing, but something I still want to do. And I'm not sure if I mentioned what it's related to before. I'm pretty sure I did, but uh, it, at least in one of the podcasts. But I'll say it again. Just this big Power Rangers production honoring uh, the 20th anniversary with Megaforce and all. I really want to get it, like, done and stuff. It, it's something I've kind of wanted to do ever since last year's Anime North. And I've been getting nothing but inspiration. Like, a- almost every day I think about it, like, how everything's going to be written out. And I think that means a lot that I think I've got something going on. I just hope I can pull it off and I hope everyone involved has a fun time with it. If anything, after that filming ever gets done, it'll take a while to edit, obviously. So don't expect a release date anytime soon for that, because it will take a while. That's all I've got. Right. Well, I'll go ahead and go next. Very little progress has been made on anything. Next. (laughs) Seriously, though. Uh, I have the next SC on, which I have done a little bit of scripting for. Well, not much, but there has been progress made on that. And uh, the person who I was going to have doing uh, some photography is still healing. Uh, she's off of the crutches right now, so there's that. I'm also going to start recording for the next Bloody World Retrospective soon. I have another part of the Escape from Bug Island LP that's in the works, and I've got a bunch of shit recorded for Wrestle City Gamers that has just been sort of sitting around because I don't know where to go with this one particular angle. Oh, and um, in a couple weeks, I'm hoping to have a new song out for uh, my music project, Semblance of Order. And I believe that's it for me. So, Blondie? Okay, well, I just recently just made a video about uh, Banjo's Way Nuts and Bolts, though it's it's really more of a joke review if you haven't already seen it. Uh, but the thing is with that is I'm actually going to do a, a bit of a follow-up for that. 
So I'm actually going to talk more serious about the game and how I, how I actually feel because the video I just did, it was more of just me just joking around and exaggerating and, and all that. And uh, so there's so there's that. It, it should be just be a very uh, short, straightforward uh, type, of, type of video compared to my other stuff because I already, you know, did all the joke stuff in the other one. Um, in addition to that, there's also my next, uh, they made a sequel video which, in the latest video, there is actually a bit of a clue as to what that game will be. Um, so I'll also be working on that. And that's about it for my main reviews. So, let's look forward to those. And I believe that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. Once again, I am SCXCR. I am Unreal. I'm Blowing a Gamer. And I'm Shadow Snake One Two Three. And I have no particularly clever way to end this podcast. So, by the way, how was that blonde cast? Oh, you mean the one that never got made? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 just about as sure as I got quote unquote fired, right? Right. Whatever. Later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's his name from the Shamu review got ran over by a car. Mr. Game Player. Yep, rest he in, he's dead. Bye. Rest in, rest in peace. Rip in yeah. peace. Yeah, rip. Ah!